welcome to another geotech video. In this video, we'll be covering the use of the dynamic cone uh, penetrometer and how to grab data in the field. But before you begin this test, make sure that you check for any utilities on the project site. Check with your client, check with your project manager, and check with the utility companies to make sure there's nothing uh, that you could break. Let's go over some of the equipment that you'll need in order to do a DCP test. The most important thing that you'll need is the hammer itself. The one I have here is a 35 pound hammer or about 18 kilograms. The ones that you guys will be receiving at your offices are 4.6 kilograms each, so quite a bit lighter. You also need to have some rod extensions. So the rods are the things that you're physically driving into the ground. Each rod is a uh, has 10 centimeter grooves to help you indicate what depth you are at and ha uh, helps you to in the process in the process of counting blow counts you'll also need a set of tools so generally what i bring with me is uh, a metal mallet a metal hammer and this is useful to help uh, wedge wedge rods apart that are tight or to take things apart with a little uh, tap with the metal hammer You'll also want to bring wire brushes. So I have an inner brush to clean the threads on the inside and a flat brush to clean the, th uh, to clean the threads on the outside. You also need to have a pair of wrenches and the wrenches are used to break apart the rods as you add rods, as you uh, remove the hammer from the rods and as you remove the hammers from the rods from the ground itself. I also keep all my cones in the toolbox as well. So with this DCP, I have two types of cones, both of which are disposable. The one here has a sleeve and I can use this to grab torque. This one is completely disposable and I don't take any torque readings when I use this one. The ones that you guys will receive at your offices um, are not disposable. so. It'll be a, a little bit harder to remove from the ground, but you'll be able to reuse it several times. I also always bring a can of polymer. So this one is a concrete uh, spray container and it's used to help cure your concrete. But we're using it here in this application to inject polymer into the borehole. And this is really only uh, important if you have deeper applications. It helps stabilize the borehole from collapse for the probing that you guys will be doing, it will be a little bit shorter. You'll only be going down about one and a half meter. And so this isn't strictly necessary, but this is helpful in high groundwater conditions or collapsible sands that are relatively loose. You also wanna bring, well for me, I always bring around a torque wrench and this is really only for the heavier DCP application, the 35 pound hammer. So you guys won't be bringing this around You also want some sort of a cleaning station. So a bucket full of water, a brush, a r dirty rag, maybe not too dirty. And then I always bring a little scraper here. And this is used, all of this is used when you're extracting the rods to get uh, some of the clay and the sand off of the rods as you clean it and extract it. You always want to make sure you bring your probing log as well. So on this probing log, I have depths versus blow counts. And I also have a torque column as well uh, for this specific application. You always want to record information about your project site. So project number, project location. Also include a little sketch of your project site in addition to your probing location. And this is a good time to talk about probing location itself. The number of probes that you do and the locations is highly dependent on the type of project that you're doing, uh, how deep you're going, what the foundation system will look like. And the Geotech Design Guide has some guidance as to how often you need to do this. The depth, it's really uh, dependent on how deep your foundation needs to go. So it's a little bit of an iterative process. If you find that you have soft soils, you might have to go a little bit deeper. But in general, a good rule of thumb is to go deeper than your footing three times uh, the footing width. Or 
get through a soft layer. You want to make sure you get through that soft layer in order to identify any sort of sub subsurface hazards. So it's very much an iterative process. As you start probing, you'll be able to identify soft zones and whether or not you need to go deeper or do more holes. Always make sure that you bring your PPE with you. So uh, for the DCP, you'll often want to have some earplugs. There's a ringing sound each time you hit the hammer, so it's good to wear hearing protection. You also want to have gloves as you lift up the hammer, hard hat, vest, bring a bunch of water. Uh, DCP work is exhausting, and so you'll want to be drinking lots of water. Over here, I have a uh, grease, so I use grease whenever I thread a rod to another rod. You want to have this in order to break your rods apart easily when you're extracting it. And last is a post popper. So for your smaller DCPs, you often won't need to bring a post popper with you. But if you find that you get stuck, you might need to go and uh, find a post popper, purchase a post popper and bring it to the site. So you'll use, it, use this to extract your rods, as you'll see later in this video. So to get started, you're going to want to prep your equipment before you start uh, driving the penetrometer into the ground. So to do this, you'll always want to start by cleaning your threads. So always take your wire brush and make sure there's no debris. If there's any debris on the threads, it will really mess up your ability to detach the rods. And then I always like to apply a little bit of grease, not too much, just enough so that when you're unthreading it, it comes apart easily. You'll take the female end of the rod, and I also have an inner brush as well, so we can clean the inside of the rod. All right, once all your threads are clean, you wanna slightly lift up the hammer itself and then thread on the rod. You also wanna prepare the rod for the cone end, so you clean that as well. and thread that on. All right, so now our DCP is ready to go. Once we get to this point, uh, you'll wanna point the tip of the cone in the direction or the location that you wanna start probing. So I'll move this a little further back And whenever you're dealing with the DCP, it's important to make sure you don't overstrain your back. So to lift up the DCP, DCP properly, you'll want to point the tip to the location you want to go. And then lifting the hammer end, you'll kind of wedge it into the ground and lift it up. So now we're ready to start drilling. Make sure that your equipment looks nice and prepared. Nothing looks out of the ordinary. And then you're going to want to lift your hammer until you feel it make contact at the top. And then once it's at the top, you're going to drop it and let it impact the anvil. And there's our first blow. So while you're doing this test, you're going to want to uh, be counting mentally in your head the number of blows uh, required to advance the penetrometer 10 centimeters. All right, so that last spot ended up being a lot more difficult than we had anticipated, and that's okay. If that happens, sometimes you'll hit a hard rock or you'll find that you're in really tough soil. It's okay to just pick up, pack up, and find a different location. So that's what we've done here. We're 
uh, outside of the area where we know there's fill and we found that it's a lot softer so this is a much better spot to actually get a deep probe in. So in this hole we've already gone about a meter and a half in and we're going to pick up from there. So as I was explaining at the previous hole you'll want to count your number of blows per each groove. So each groove represents 10 centimeters. So you're going to want to start by counting the number of blows to get you 10 centimeters. And I'll usually do this over 20 centimeters total. So I'll, I'll keep track in my head the first set of 10 and then I'll start counting again once I make it past the first set of 10 to 20 centimeters. So we'll start by counting the number of blows. All right, so that was about 15 and 18 blows. So I'll record that on my probing log. And the DCP I'm using is a little bit different than the DCPs that you'll be receiving at your offices. The one that I'm using has a, a neat feature where if you record the torque, you can take a torque reading from the top and it will actually read the torque um, on the cone in the bottom of the hole. So we can use this to uh, make correlations to soil type and it also helps us to estimate the soil uh, consistency or stiffness. So I'll take a torque reading. Usually in this application I'll take a torque reading every 20 centimeters. So that's about 13 foot-pounds. And often with DCP testing, it's a lot easier to do it with two people. So in general, I recommend that you bring a partner or a friend to go out with you, but it's not impossible to do it by yourself. I've done this many times by myself on steep terrains and you can do it, it's just not easy. I've got about 20 blows and 20 blows. is a lot stiffer so I'm thinking we might be in more clay material. So you'll continue to advance the rod until you get to the last groove mark uh, on your rod. And once you get there, you're going to stop. Uh, I'll show you guys how to swap out rods and add additional rods once we get there. To add additional rods to the probe, you'll take two wrenches. Each of your DCP should come with two extra rods, so you should be able to go down a total depth of a meter and a half. The rods in this video are one meter each, but you guys will have half a meter rods. And then you'll use these wrenches to break the rod and the hammer apart, and then unthread it. Be careful not to drop your hammer when you unthread it. As with the first rod, you're going to want to check to make sure that all your threads are clean. Make sure there's no sand or soil between the threads. Then apply a little bit of grease.
Then we're gonna carefully pick up the hammer. When you pick up the hammer, make sure that you don't strain your back when you're lifting it up. And for this, for this heavier hammer, I like to position it on my shoulder to help me aim to the thread. Be very careful not to drop it. And the last thing I usually do whenever I add a rod extension is I'll always make sure to add some polymer to the borehole. So what we have in this container is a polymer and water mixture. And what this does, it's kind of a gluey, sticky substance. And what it does is it helps stabilize the borehole from collapse. You're gonna wanna make sure to get some sort of borehole stabilizer. And I found that polymer works very well to do that. So you'll add it until it's about flush with the ground surface. And then that should get you, uh, it should be able to get you down another meter or so before you have to add some more. So now it's time to start extracting the rods. We went down about six and a half meter and I found some pretty competent bedrock. So we're gonna start extracting our rods. And sometimes for the DCPs that you guys will be receiving, we have one and a half meters of stick. And usually with uh, that depth, you're usually able to rest the rods free by just lightly tapping the rod upwards. But since we went down so deep, we're gonna have to use a post popper to remove it. And most of the time you'll want to have an extra rod attached uh, to your final rod, just so that you have something to grip against. And when you're using the post popper, you wanna make sure that the, the post popper itself is plumb with the rod so as to not damage or bend the rod too much. So you'll slowly wanna extract it. All right, and right now, there's some notches that you can attach a wrench to. I always like to attach a wrench to the bottom rod. And that's to help prevent it from slipping down into the hole. As, a rod, as you remove the rod, the hole tends to become looser and looser, and so your rod might fall and drop, and we wanna avoid that. So always make sure you have a, rod on, or a, a wrench on the bottom to pre prevent that from slipping around. And then usually, as I'm extracting a rod, this is a good opportunity to wipe the rods to keep them clean. And you can break them apart. Put it into storage.